Welcome to this stratospheric edition of Burning Earth Radio. This is your host, Gerard Spring, coming to you from the north. So every winter, it seems like there's a lot of news stories that are coming out about the polar vortex and how the polar vortex is messing with the weather in the continental United States and North America in general as a whole. And what these news stories typically do is they pick some weather event, either a winter storm or really cold temperatures somewhere, and they'll blame it on the polar vortex. And typically what you'll see in the story is a wavy blue line coming across the screen with maybe an area labeled, quote, Arctic air, unquote, or polar vortex or something like this. And I think these kinds of sensationalized news stories are really, really misleading because they don't really tell you about what the polar vortex is and why it would have any effect on on the climate. So without further ado, let's swing over to Earth Null School and take a look at what's going on with the polar vortex. So I've gone ahead and fired up Earth Null School, and what we're looking at to start with is temperatures at the surface in the Arctic Mediterranean Basin. You can see we have a nice cyclone here that's developed off the north coast of Greenland in Svalbard. And in order to get to the polar vortex, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to zoom out so that we can see what's going on on a planetary level. I want to see the entire northern hemisphere, as much of it as I can. And in order to get to the polar vortex, I'm going to step over here into the selector panel and go up to 10 hectopascals in this height selector. I'm going to go ahead and downsize this so that you can appreciate this feature that we see here that's developed over the North Pole. So what you're looking at is the Northern Hemisphere Stratospheric Polar Vortex. And this exists way up in the mid-stratosphere at about 30,000 meters or around 100,000 feet. And the polar vortex is a seasonal phenomenon. It happens every winter. It's something that develops naturally and it's expected as a part of the Earth's climate systems. And... What it's caused by is the fact that in the winter, there's no light up here in the Arctic, so the stratosphere tends to cool. Meanwhile, down here in the lower latitudes in the equatorial regions, the stratosphere is much warmer. And what this does is this drives this nice cyclonic wind pattern over the North Pole, kind of circumnavigating the North Pole here. Because the polar vortex is a seasonal phenomenon, I think it's interesting to take a look at what's going on down here in the southern hemisphere. So today it's the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere, and that means that it's the summer solstice in the southern hemisphere. So all of this stratosphere region over Antarctica is in 24 hours daylight. It's constantly being warmed by the sun. So this is driving warm stratospheric temperatures here, this minus 26.5 degrees C. And if we look at the temperatures relative to the equator, for example, we have minus 45.4 degrees C. So just like in the northern hemisphere, the difference in sunlight has generated a gradient in the temperatures between the equator and the South Pole. And what this is doing is it's driving this anticyclonic wind flow around the Antarctic continent. So if we step exactly six months back from the Southern Hemisphere summer solstice, we should be, give or take a few hours, at the Southern Hemisphere winter solstice. And what we can see developing over Antarctic here is something very similar to what we saw in the Arctic. And again, we have this stratospheric polar vortex associated with wintertime. Over Antarctica, the stratosphere is very cold like it was in the Arctic, minus 85.4. And then over here near the equator, it's around minus 40, minus 42.4. And this temperature gradient now drives cyclonic winds. And if we swing back up over here into the Arctic, we can see something very similar to what we saw during the Southern Hemisphere summer solstice. That is, we have high stratosphere temperatures around the North Pole, lower stratosphere temperatures around the equator, and anti-cyclonic motion associated with the summertime analog of the polar vortex. So swinging back to now and taking a look at our current wintertime stratospheric polar vortex up in the northern hemisphere, I want to take a few moments to try to connect what's happening with the dynamics of the stratosphere to 
climate and weather as we experience it here down in the troposphere near the surface. And in order to do this, I'm going to swing over here to the Earth panel, and I'm going to look at the instantaneous wind power density. And what the instantaneous wind power density is, is it's a measurement of the amount of energy that's in the wind. Technically, it's a measurement of the amount of energy per unit time in the wind, or the power. So I'm going to pick a spot here off the south coast of Greenland, and I'm going to look at the number, and we see we have about 6.0 kilowatts per meter squared of instantaneous wind power density. I want you to keep track of this number as we step down through the atmosphere approaching the surface. So if we step down into the jet stream, we can see that these numbers generally tend to go up. We have about 13 kilowatts here, but we still can find regions it's of, of about maybe several times the instantaneous wind power density here. If we continue to step down just below the jet stream, maybe we can see that we also have numbers in the 6 to 10 range maybe 20 in certain certain areas. And if we go all the way down to the surface, for example, we can see we also have around 6.2 kilowatts per meter squared of instantaneous wind power density. So what I intend to show here is that the instantaneous wind power density is somehow evenly distributed as you go up from the surface all the way into the mid-stratosphere. We have 6.2 kilowatts per meter squared winds at the surface, and we have winds of similar energy density, similar power density up in the stratosphere. So if we have some kind of fluctuations with wind power density in the stratosphere, that these fluctuations can propagate down into the jet stream and affect the behavior of the jet stream. And the changes that we, in fluctuations that we have in the jet stream can propagate down and affect what's happening at the surface. And this can also happen vice versa, where if you have a change at the surface, such as some local heating, which creates a change in the instantaneous wind power density at the surface, this can then propagate and affect what's happening up in the stratosphere. So when thinking about the stratospheric polar vortex in the context of weather and climate as we experience them down here on the surface, there's a couple of interesting trends that I would like to point out. So right now we're looking at the Northern Hemisphere stratospheric polar vortex, and we can see that it's established, but it's not particularly strong. And especially over Norway, Svalbard here, there's a very weak area. So if we swing down into the jet stream and take a look at what's going on, we can see that there's a lot more meridional flow when the polar vortex weakens. And this is a general trend with the polar vortex. If the polar vortex weakens, the jet stream becomes a lot more wavy and you have a lot more north to south flow in the jet stream. Conversely, when the, when the polar vortex strengthens, the jet stream becomes a lot more zonal and a lot more east to west. And if we swing down and look at the temperatures at the surface, we can get a sense of what's going on. Where the jet stream is more meridional, we have a lot more excursions of warm air to the north and cold air coming to the south. So this is a general trend with the polar vortex, is that when the polar vortex weakens, you have that the Arctic air mass in general looks a lot more broken up. And conversely, when the polar vortex strengthens, all of this cold air becomes much more contained within the Arctic. So in order to explain this a little bit further, I've brought up the surface temperature anomaly map for today. And you can see that we have this very cold area here over Siberia and this warm area over the North Pole. And in both cases, the temperature anomaly is pretty large, about 20 degrees colder than average here and about 20 degrees warmer than average here. And these temperature anomalies reflect what's going on with the jet stream where you saw a lot more meridional flow where you had warm air coming up here into the Arctic and then cold air coming down over Siberia. This isn't to say that the changes we're seeing are caused directly by the polar vortex. It's just to indicate that there's a correlation between what's going on with the polar vortex and what's going on down in the troposphere with the weather. Everything in the atmosphere is connected to everything else in the atmosphere, and you can't just take apart the climate system. So I hope you enjoyed this stratospheric edition of Burning Earth Radio. If you did, please comment, like, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to having you along for the next one. Thanks for listening.